Here's another one. You have the wrong team in the room. This is, uh, this is another big one. Yes, I know that you're a very friendly group of people and you're very likable and you had a great holiday party and here's a picture with everybody together and look at how nice and friendly we are. When, uh, and, and Bob Wiesner talked a little bit about this from a, a prospecting perspective as well. You need to kind of go in thinking more like this with a pitch. One of the mistakes that we make, um, uh, and this came up in this morning session, is we try to be liked at the cost of being respected. We don't have a spine, and the client comes in, and we're all, oh shucks, look at how, look at my big smile, and we're all friendly, and hey, let's, let me shake your hand. Hey, can I get that chair for you? And, let me top up your coffee. Is that the right kind of coffee? We've got 17 flavors if you want. Let me know and I'd be happy to get that for you. Or you can send it to your home if you'd like to have these at home, if you want some variety. <laughs> Just let us know what you would like. Are you okay? No, you can tell us if you're not okay. Like, and it's this, uh, not only is it not an attractive quality in an agency, it's not an attractive quality in a person to not have a backbone, to be a bit of a butt kisser, uh, so to speak. It's, um, yeah. Cut them if they can't present. This is the number one criteria for your pitch team. And I will answer the question that's in your minds right now. I will come back to that question in a moment about the people that would work on the business. One weak link on your pitch team brings down the entire pitch. Um, if I can share a story that I shared in this morning's uh, session, uh, so I, if, if those that heard it could just in, indulge me for a moment for the, the rest of the group. There's some agencies that we follow that ignore the request for only the team that would work on the business to only have them in the room. And what they do is kind of interesting. Uh, they ignore it. But there's a little bit more uh, uh, color that needs to be painted with that. They show up for the final pitch presentation. So kind of contrast the difference between kind of those mid-level junior people that you bring into pitches, haven't presented together that often, they're still kind of learning to present well. For a junior mid-level person, a pitch is like their heart is beating out of their chest. Um, they're so nervous. So there's this kind of stiff presentation at the front of the room and you can see the fear in their eyes and you're just hoping they don't pass out and collapse and they've got their few moments at the front of the room it's a little bit clunky but hey good going guys you're what you're doing I'm proud of you and the clients sitting there thinking I hope this person doesn't pass out they look really nervous oh my god is she gonna be okay up there oh you know what? I just realized I haven't been listening to what she's saying I'm so focused on feeling sorry for her the analogy I've used before is, think of junior people that present internally, even in internal meetings when they get nervous and you find yourself focusing on how nervous they are rather than what they have to say. If a client starts to think to themselves, oh my God, they look so nervous, I hope they're going to be okay, that's probably not an indication that you will be selected. Um, so here's what these guys do, which I think is interesting. Um, so they show up with their rock star team. They're kind of five, six people. And they do an amazing presentation. All of them are strong. They have seamless transitions. They don't introduce the next person. And now John is going to talk to you uh, about where the creative idea came from. Well, thank you, Brent. And now what I'm going to do is talk about, no, I finish my thought. And the next person starts talking from their seat, and we pass each other uh, across the front of the room. It's a seamless transition. So what these guys do, killer presentation. It's got some energy. Client maybe even has a few tingles going down their spine because it's such a strong, emotionally engaging presentation. But how did they handle it at the beginning? So at the beginning of the meeting, what they do is they say, now, first, you guys asked, 
that only the people that would work on the business be here for the presentation. And we actually think that's a really important request. They validate it. Um, we actually have a better way to help you understand uh, if the day-to-day -day people that we've selected are the right people. And we don't think having them present for 90 seconds is the way to do that. What we recommend is if you like what you see today and you decide to hire us, don't hire us. Make it subject to us sending the people that would work on the business to your offices for an interview. One agency even jokes, you know, interview them as hard as you want, as long as you want, waterboard them if you want to. Do what you need to do until you feel confident that you've got the right people. What's re so they say, and then they follow that with, and here's why you need to know the five people around this table right now. Jen, creative director. Every piece of creative, driven by, approved by, everything passes through her. She approves the brief even. She's there for the briefing of the team. Everything goes through her. John, head of planning, whatever. Everything driven by, approved by this person sitting at the table right here. So they kind of complete this thought and they say, so is that sound like a plan. Would that be acceptable? We will ship them to you and you interview them. The client says, yeah, okay. That actually sounds like a good, a good plan. It's amazing what clients will do when you, with a bit of confidence, with a bit of authority, not arrogance, but a bit of authority, make a suggestion that's still in their best interest. They validated the client's request, gave them another way to handle it, knowing their people would stand up better in an interview than in a pitch presentation. And what the part I really love about this story, and now this has been probably four, five, six months since I've spoken to the, this one agency in particular. The last time I spoke to them, I said, so how many times have you actually sent the people over? Zip. They win the business. They say, all right, let us know when you want to send the people over. We know there's kind of a subject to thing. They're like, you know what? I'm sure they're going to be phenomenal. Just send them over. We'll meet them at the kickoff meeting. Our recommendation isn't quite as bold as that. But it is around having a core team, or if you're big enough to have multiple core teams that present together quite regularly, um, but augment them with those that would work on the business. If they're not strong presenters, A, try to get them some training, but B, dial back their role as much as you can. The, the nucleus, the energy in the room will be driven by that core team. When a core team presents together over and over and over again, there's a chemistry. There's a sense of humor that comes out in the room. Core teams are absolutely critical. And I know it's tough because your people are busy. You don't just have them sitting around. Should you be going into the pitch? If you don't have the right people, why are you going to waste all the time, the resources, the money, going into a pitch when you don't have even the right team to cast. We're in a period of really looking at talent upgrading and training, particularly the upgrading part. I've had a lot of conversations with CEOs over the last two or three years in particular, heartfelt ones where they've talked about the fact that some of their senior people, some of the people on their team, maybe they've been with the agency for 10, 15 years, they're just not taking it to where it needs to go now. And I, I don't know, Brent, have you seen other agencies? What do, they, what do they do? Like, how do I deal with this? And one of them maybe is a creative director. And God, he's been with us for 25 years, but he's just not where we need to be. We're not winning as much business as we need to. And uh, it's, a, it's a tough conversation, but I'll usually diplomatically be relatively frank and constructive that it may be uh, an upgrade or a, a, a talent trade out that might be necessary. It's one of the hardest things to do. I mean, I'm sure many of us have had to let people go before and there's nothing worse. I don't think there's anything harder I've ever done than let someone go who's a good person, but they're just not right for the role. And you've got to make that tough decision for the good of the whole and to drive new business in the direction it needs to be going. Thank you.